And it's a really powerful approach because when people use that word, it gives them the space to not do it. So I listen carefully for that word. And when they say that, I tell them and talk to them about sort of their internal thinking to help process that. Um, so I think that's one. And then two is typically when people come, especially to the first visit, when I review a lot of this, they bring a, a significant other, a friend, a spouse, a partner, whatever. Uh, a lot of times having that, you know, sort of accountability partner really makes a difference. But again, I, I wish I could tell you who's going to make changes and who's not. Um, yes, the sicker you are, the more likely I can get them to do almost anything. Um, you know, but why wait till you're so sick? So can you explain the role of antioxidants in plant-based foods in preventing heart disease? Sure. I mean, when you walk into the grocery store, almost always you walk into the produce section. And why? Because it's a highly attractive, bright and colorful uh, field that makes you want to eat the, the fruits and vegetables that are there. And the reason is these are loaded with antioxidants and they're attractive to the human eye. Whereas the meat section is as dismal and gray and awful as you could ever imagine. So my strong suggestion is, is to eat those bright colors, which is a marker that the fruit or vegetable you're eating is loaded in antioxidants. And we know that one of the major aging processes and living in an oxygen rich environment like we do is that free radical damage is a real thing and it contributes to virtually every part of disease and aging we know of. And when you eat things that scavenge up those free radicals like antioxidants, people do better. So um, how does a whole food plant-based diet compare to the Mediterranean diet? You, you mentioned this uh, in your talk, but if you can talk about that a little bit, uh, diet in terms of cardiovascular health outcomes. Yeah, the cardiovascular outcomes um, that are possible with the Mediterranean diet are really quite good. Remember that our traditional Mediterranean diet is mostly plant-based. Now, there have been some studies that have looked at a Mediterranean diet versus a vegan diet. Vegan diets tend to edge them out almost always. Uh, the pro-vegetarian cohort of the Predimed diet does uh, also do better. Um, but again, I think in general, a plant-based diet is a plus. So if you're not willing to go all the way plant-based for whatever reason you may have, which is probably not always the most logical, but regardless, if that's where you are, um, you know, going Mediterranean is fine, but I much prefer people go all the way plant-based. So think of it maybe as a stepping stone, but I think the differences are not nearly as much. And remember that getting a Mediterranean diet to apply worldwide may not always work, right? So if you go to parts of Asia that are inland, and you say, hey, I want you to eat a Mediterranean diet. It may not register. It's not culturally appropriate. And we know that many of the original uh, Asian diets, which were higher in rice, fruits, vegetables, and, and other types of grains and minimal amounts of fish, also had very positive outcomes. So bottom line is um, eating a predominantly plant-based diet of whatever flavor you choose is really the right way to go. And if you can go all the way, more power to you. So, um, and what is the role of supplementation in a plant-based diet? In general, there really is no role. If you eat a well-balanced diet, you don't need supplements. But if you don't eat a well-balanced diet, you might need supplements. The major risk, of course, in a, in a fully plant-based diet is B12 deficiency, which some people can get from nutritional yeast. Um, so you might need to take some B12. And then uh, worldwide, most of us are vitamin D deficient because we spend most of our time inside wearing long sleeves and whatnot. Um, so some people might need vitamin D, but the vast majority of people do not need supplements. And what about things like probiotics? Also probably don't need probiotics necessarily, but if you're worried about it, um, you know, again, eating a healthy diet improves your gut flora, but you can certainly get a non-dairy fermented uh, yogurt or other vegetable or fruit to help improve uh, your gut uh, microbiome if that's something that you need to do. And the term supplements is uh, is a little ambiguous because some people throw in. So when you say supplements, people are thinking you know vitamins in a in a you know in a plastic you know jar. But then you also have think people will talk about supplements like supplementing with turmeric or curcumin and things like that. What are your thoughts about adding in basically what's ground whole food whole you know whole plant? Yeah. I mean those are just really spices, right? So if you eat enough Indian food, you'll get all those spices all all in every meal pretty much if you wanted to. So. I tell people that the thing that makes food taste unbelievably good in most cases is the way it's seasoned and spiced. That's also true for meats, right? I mean, most meat when it's cooked without any spicing it, it is actually quite not delicious at all. Um, and so I think in general, adding spice and seasonings to your foods makes sense. And they're loaded with antioxidants and other beneficial compounds. And if you're not eating that way, or you detest a certain type of food, you know, if you want some ground up turmeric or ginger or whatever, feel free. But I think these potent, fragrant spices have a lot of benefits. And are there any particular ones that you would recommend for heart health? Um, I would say that there's a whole variety. You know, if, you, if you're not eating garlic and some of the antioxidants, I would do that. You know, Michael Greger has a whole wonderful list of the antioxidants he consumes every day. He likes amla, which are gooseberries and all these different things. 
I would say that if you're loading up on antioxidants in whatever local fruit or vegetable you have available, I'm good with that. I don't know if there's a specific supplement that I would call out that you need uh, for heart health necessarily. And, and with regard to AMLA, and I, I've seen Michael Greger's uh, talks on uh, on AMLA, what are the the health benefits uh, of AMLA in particular, which is considered, you know, kind of the the king of, uh, you know, of, of these foods? Um, what, what's your thoughts on AMLA? I mean, it's, there's data that supports all sorts of health outcomes, often in the neurologic and anti-aging space. Um, and I guess what I would say is it's a potent antioxidant. Um uh, he would be the first to admit to you that most of these don't taste very good. Uh, so you're, you're welcome to, to try them. I'm not sure you need it. Um, you know, but if you said to me, I, I want to, you know, live to be 150 years old and I want to stop aging, you might consider it again. Some of these are quite expensive. Some are not expensive at all. Um, so I, I'm not sure I, I stand behind that you need these things, but if you said, I'm trying to achieve X, Y, or Z, it certainly may not be unreasonable. And are there any downsides that people should be mindful of when they're considering taking any of these? Definitely check with your doctor. Some of these things do interact with um, known pharmaceuticals and other supplements. Um, and not all of your doctors will know all the supplements. In fact, I think if you were to go around and poll the cardiologist and ask them about AMLA, they would have no idea what it was for the most part. So um, what, what's your response to critics who argue that plant-based diets are not suitable for everyone? Well, that's probably true. I mean, I don't think that you can say that every person could do it. You know, like, again, if you were to live in a very, very cold climate where fruits and vegetables were difficult to come by or grow, you might not be able to do this. But that said, I've never come across a person uh, that wouldn't benefit from this type of approach. So I guess what I would say is, I think everybody does benefit from these, but there's probably some people out there for whatever reason, and it may be that they've you know, built up this terrible sort of cardiometabolic state where when they suddenly eat things that are healthy, their body doesn't respond well. And I certainly see a lot of these patients, you know, when they do it, I've had patients say, well, I felt weak or I felt this, or I had diarrhea or constipation. And I will point out that when you have changed a lifetime of dietary or lifestyle habits, you should expect all kinds of crazy things to happen for the first couple of weeks until you get used to your new baseline. Now, many people have no effect, but some people do. And I think it's important to counsel people that when you make massive lifestyle changes, your body may react. Uh, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's a sign that maybe it may benefit you. So, so um, can, let's see, according to Michael Greger, uh, his research on consumption of nuts, uh, he says that it's associated with reduced risk of premature death making them an essential component of a diet aimed at promoting longevity. And he highlights walnuts in particular for their omega-3 content and uh, potential for improving artery function. Do you agree what, um, and what are the health benefits of a diet in, um, in plant fats like seeds, nuts, avocados, and olives? What are the pros and cons? Yeah, you know, this is a hotly debated topic in the plant-based world. So even if you press SE hard enough, he'll tell you you can have three walnut halves in a day. Um, so what I would say is the goal with nuts is to have some. Um, you know, I always tell people the worst thing that ever got invented, my vice, is shelled pistachio nuts, right? So the shells are designed to slow you down, right? Because they're very caloric, but there's a lot of very beneficial compounds in them. And I would tell you that nuts and seeds across the world have been shown time and time again in general to be very beneficial for a variety of disease states. Now, there are some patients who have very advanced cardiovascular disease, and when they eat a sudden amount of high fats, their endothelial cells react poorly. And those people, I sometimes will say, there is some evidence that SE has shown, and most of that's been largely bench-based, um, that well, may not be bench beneficial. Bench-based meaning that it's not uh, in live human beings. Um, so again, I definitely believe in lower fat whole food diets with limited nuts, oils, seeds, etc. but they need to be uh, again, used in moderation. Um, and then again, you know, a lot of this is splitting hairs, right? When we're talking about the standard American diet versus a diet that has a few nuts and seeds and, and avocados versus one that doesn't, you know, they're, they're still, you know, unbelievably different from each other.